Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about React State. So State is actually data stored in an application at a specific time. However, State can also change. Now, to demonstrate that, um, we're going to use the useState hook. And within React, you will hear a lot about hooks. And uh, it's simply a function that hooks into your component. So it's essentially you importing a function in your React component and then using it. So let's start with um, using the useState hook and let's build a counter. So I can say const and I want to set a state for the count value. So I will call it count. And then the convention is to use set count right here. And then I will say use state. And here I will pass the default value. So we want to start with a count value of zero. So right here, count is actually the number. And here on the right, we have the set state action. So this is what we're going to use if we want to change the count. So let's first put a button in here. And I will say again, uh, well, actually, let's call it um, increase counter. And down below, I will have the p tag with the current count value. So if I go back to my app and I save it, there you will see the button and the count value. So now, of course, if I click right here, nothing will happen. However, what I could do, I could say on click. And then we want to, again, pass a callback function. And we could say set count. And we take in the count value and add one to it. So now if we save it and click on the button, you will see the count increases. And this is actually great about React because what happens when I click this button, the component will re-render with the new value and thus display that new count value. So we will have almost immediate updates. Now, we can also check the state using the dev tools. So if I open it up and go right here, and of course for this, we need to have the React developer tools installed. Now right here, if I click on app, you can actually see right here in the hook section that we have a state of eight, which is of course our count value. Now we could, um, get a problem if we're setting the count value like this, because let's say we have a new function and I will call it const on click function. And let's say um, this does two set counts. So we could have right here a set count and it will take in the count plus 10. And then we, for example, have some more code and then, oops. And then it will again say set count, count plus two. And now instead of having this in our on click, I will remove it and I can directly call on click function. So now if I save it, you might expect that whenever I click the increase counter button, um, the count value will immediately be set to 12, the sum of these two. So I will refresh the page so it will get rid of the state and we'll start back at zero, our default value. But now when I click, it will only increase by two. And the reason for this is that React kind of batches these two set state actions together. However, it will only set the state for this line and we'll forget about this one. So to prevent that from happening, I could use the pref state keyword and you can actually name it however you want. However, most people will call it pref state. So I could say pref state and then return 
the previous state plus 1. And now, or 10. And now if I do this for this line as well, and I will say plus 2. Now whenever I save the file and reload it, you will see it works perfectly fine. So that's why if you want to change a state that is depending on the previous state, always use that pref state keyword. However, if I'm sure I want to set that state, for example, to five, whenever I click the button and I don't want to increase it whatsoever, I could just immediately say set state and set it to five. So now the next thing I'd like to show you is again, uh, a very nice thing about pref state. Let's say we have a toggle right here. And before that, I will just remove this. And I will rename this to toggle, set toggle. And let's say it's false by default. Now right here, I could say, if toggle is true, then display on, otherwise display off. And now here in the unclick, I could pass a callback and I will say set toggle. I take the pref state. Oops. There we go. And I can return the opposite of pref state. So now whenever I save this, you will see by default, it's off. Oh, let's change the text right here as well. We could say toggle um, state. There we go. So now I have a click right here. It will toggle on and off. You can see it in the dev tools as well. It will toggle on and off. So that's a great use case of pref state as well. So the main takeaway from this video is that you can use the use state hook to define state and change it. And that you have to use pref state if you want to change the state that is depending on the previous state. However, if you want to set the state and you don't care about what the previous state was, you can just directly set the state. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.